The virtual convocation will now begin. The virtual convocation will now begin. Good afternoon and welcome to our first and what I hope is our only all virtual Agnes Scott College Alumni Convocation. Convocation is the annual celebration of Agnes Scott and what it means to be a Scotty alum. Coming together in any manner is absolutely something to celebrate. I'm Giselle Fernandez Martin, Scotty class of 1998 and current president of the Agnes Scott College Alumni Association. With that, I hereby call to order the annual meeting of the association. You, our reunion classes, are called upon to represent the Agnes Scott Alumni Association membership. All the assembled Agnes Scott present, no matter your location or reunion year, we are thrilled you are here with us today. Um, this is definitely something to celebrate. Here is one silver lining this crazy year of 2020. We get to welcome our newest class of Scotty alums to their first alumni convocation. Class of 2020, you were hit especially hard by COVID-19. And we welcome you with open arms to our community of alums. We got to raise a toast on, on May 15th for your first official welcome to the Alumni Association. And on May 16th, your graduation was official. 
How exciting. Now you are a Scotty for life, no matter what. I want to take this moment to introduce one member of the class that embodies their energy, Jody Webster. Hi, I'm Jody Webster. I'm from Kingston, Jamaica, and I'm a neuroscience major. I'm so excited to finally be a part of Agnes Scott's alumni community. I'm mostly looking forward to connecting with current students and being a resource in whatever way I can. There are so many current Scotties that have some amazing potential, so I definitely intend to keep the link strong with them. The class of 2020 is a group of all around brilliant and driven individuals who will make such a lasting change in this world. And I'm so excited to see the impact that we make for years to come. So for our first order of business, we begin by calling roll call of the reunion classes. Scotties who graduated in the years with O's and fives. I want to recognize and thank our reunion class officers. Special heartfelt thanks to all of our class officers reunion chairs and committees, and fun chairs and giving committees who had worked so hard to plan this year's alumni weekend. You gave of yourself every step of the way, including helping to make the heartbreaking decision to put safety of others above your own wishes. Thank you for your hard work and selfless leadership. Now, on to our reunion classes. Because we can't see each other in the traditional way, I'm asking for a Scotty Reunion class shout out. Use the chat function to share an emoji using the Pulse feature and we will get it started. Ah, pomp and circumstance. Yes, that sets the right tone. Let's begin the shout out by hearing from the first Reunion class, the class of 2020. Visionaries, let me hear you. All right, way to get this roll call started. Now, 2015 alums, are you Tinker Wolves or Mean Green 2015? Let's hear from our fifth reunion class. Oh, Phoenixes, our 10th reunion class, class of 2010, are you here? Rising from the ashes, let us hear from you. Class of 2005, calling all queens of the Nile, giving us a royal shout out, queens. Are you here, class of 2000 Blues Brothers? Our class of millennium celebrates 20 years since graduation. Class of 1995, wasn't it clapping that saved Tinkerbell? Class of Peter Pan, can you make a little noise for the 25th reunion? Here they come to save the day, the class of 1990. Mighty mountains have arrived and to celebrate their 30th reunion. The year was 1985, a year for the Sundance kids. Let's hear it for the 35th reunion class. And where are you, Keystone Cuffs? The class of 1980 is here to celebrate their 40th reunion. Shout out to you all, class of 1980. Our class of 1975, celebrating your 45th reunion. Let me hear that groovy Johnny Appleseed spirit. And it wouldn't be an Agnes Scott reunion without our 50th reunion class. Their class mascot is Christopher Robin and his friends from the Hundred Acre Wood. Class of 1970, it is time to raise your voice. Use your chat and emoji features to announce your presence. The class of 1965 are still the mischief makers represented by their Dennis the Menace mascot, even as they celebrate their 55th reunion. But wait, we aren't done yet. In the immortal words of your class mascot, Charlie Brown, Good grief, class of 1960. Is it already your 60th reunion? We are glad you are here today. And last but definitely not least are the bells of this ball, the grand dams of the classes celebrating their reunions, our classes of 1955 and 1950. Our most esteemed alumni classes are here to honor their 65th and 70th reunion. Can you here from our classes of 1950 and 1955. So exciting. It was so great to hear from all of you. And another silver lining, we have alumni from across the world with us today, many of whom have been back to campus since graduation. We are so glad you are here. Alumni in China, alumni in the United Kingdom, we know you are here with us. Alumni across the country and across the world, 
Let me hear from you. We want to know who has joined us from far and near. Fantastic. And thank you all. The last few months have been tough, but our Scotty community is together and tougher than any pandemic. Talk about Scotty Strong. We are Scotty Strong. I can now confidently affirm that we have the required membership to conduct business. The next order of business is to hear about the state of our alumni community. In the first weeks of this pandemic, our alumni community rallied to support our students, opening their homes and giving generously to meet emergency student needs as they departed campus. You, our alumni, have given over $20,000 to the Student Emergency Fund. I'm thrilled to share that the senior class gift for the class of 2020 has given almost $1,600 to this fund as well. Scotty's helping Scotty's from the very beginning. The care we have for one another is, as Scotty's is so powerful. Alumni are also reaching out to other alums, making calls to one another to help combat the isolation that can come from social distancing and sheltering in place. This work is ongoing and you can still sign up to call via the alumni webpage. I am so proud of the alum community to which we all belong, a kind community that cares for each other. But that wasn't all that happened this year. Scotty celebrated with fall kickoff luncheons in Atlanta and Decatur. Scotty's continued to give back through service projects and career mentoring, and Scotty's engaged through art exhibitions, educational seminars, reading groups, and social events. President Zach traveled to meet Scotty's in North Carolina and South Florida. And following a national search, we selected one of our very own to lead the Office of Alumni Relations, class of 1993, Mary Frances Kerr. With over a decade in higher education leadership, she is well prepared for her role at Agnes Scott. In true Scotty fashion, we will celebrate together again when it is safe for us to do so. But more on that in a moment. Like every part of our world, our alma mater has been affected by this global pandemic, but together we are strong. It is my honor to introduce the leader of our Scotty community, the ninth president of Agnes Scott College. Now into her second year, Lee is well known across campus and across Atlanta. We continue to ensure our alums know her too. Lee Zach is no stranger to the mission of women's colleges. She is a Pi Beta Kappa graduate of Mount Holyoke College, which recognized her as a woman of influence in 2012. She also holds a JD degree from Northeastern University School of Law. She came to Agnes Scott with extensive background in international economic development and international project finance. She was appointed director of the US Trade and Development Agency by President Barack Obama and served as general counsel and deputy director during the George W. Bush administration. She has held faculty positions at the Georgetown University Law Center and the Boston University School of Law. These accomplishments translate to a fearless leader that means business, and she leads with compassion, grace, and integrity. I have been privileged to witness to her high level of character. We are so honored to have you as our president, leading us in this chapter in Agnes Scott's legacy. Welcome, President Lee Zak. Thank you, Giselle, and hello, Scotties. I am closing my eyes and imagining walking up to the podium in Gaines Chapel and looking out at all of you in your class colors and costumes. You look fabulous. I see the blue class, the class color of our most recent graduates, the visionaries. The yellow classes, my undergraduate color. The green classes and the red classes, my honorary Agnes Scott class. I know you wish you were actually here today. The campus is beautiful. The magnolia trees are bursting with white blossoms. Over the past few months, although the campus is closed, and I have been working from the beautiful Scott Sands house. I have not been able to stay away. My husband, Ken and I have been taking daily walks through our beautiful campus. Last week, 
We stood on the platform between Presser and Buttrick, where graduation would have taken place, and thought about our amazing students and their persistence and resilience. They are true Scotties. We celebrated them as best we could with care packages and virtual celebrations. I hope you saw the graduation video. Okay, I cried. But we look forward to the class of 2020 returning for an in-person commencement when it is safe to do so, so that they can carry with them the memories that you all have. Even though the on-campus experience was cut short this year, I am glad that we were able to experience so many of the traditions that make Agnes Scott unique and which create a special bond with you. We witnessed the signing of the honor code, senior investiture, a special Founders Day celebration, complete with a new tradition, morning donuts, and many students ringing the bell in Maine to announce their future plans. I was deeply honored this past February at the sophomore ring ceremony when you, the Alumni Association, invited me into the Black Ring Mafia with my own Black Onyx ring. I must confess, the ring ceremony has become my favorite Agnes Scott tradition. Thank you. It has been a challenging time around the world. I hope you and your loved ones are well. I am extremely grateful to our outstanding faculty and staff who enabled us to finish the semester online. I am also very grateful to many of you who contributed to the Student Emergency Fund. And for those who opened their homes to our international students and students who were unable to return home when they were forced to close in March. Some of our students were in great need. They generally rely on the campus for food and shelter. The emergency fund has made a fundamental difference while they are away. Now we hope that they will be able to return to Agnes Scott. We are concerned that for some, tuition was already a stretch, obviously a worthwhile one, but with job losses during this period, it could be an impossibility. We don't want to lose these students who have come so far and in whom families have put their hopes and dreams. It is also challenging for the college as you know, we faced reductions in revenues from room and board refunds and canceled weddings, movies, and summer camps. Like colleges across the country, we are uncertain about the size of the entering class and have extended the enrollment deposit date. We hope to be able to return to face-to-face -face classes in the fall with remote options for students and faculty who need them, but we are preparing for every eventuality. We simply do not know what the coming months will hold. The one thing I do know is that working together, we will overcome these obstacles. Our faculty and staff have already made sacrifices to ensure that our students have continued success. We are applying for grants and seeking new funding, from funders who understand the value of educating women, and in many cases, those for whom Agnes Scott is their means to a better life. And I know that our amazing alumni are always there for their fellow Scotties. Thank you. This year's COVID-19 experience has truly demonstrated the direct impact your generosity has on the success of the college and our students. And we have much to celebrate. This past year, our summit program successfully launched SCALE, Sophomore Class Atlanta Leadership Experience, as a parallel to our first year experience, Journeys. This past year, 22 Atlanta area businesses, 
not-for-profits, and entrepreneurs hosted students for a week-long leadership experience and exposure to a professional environment. Yes, we continue to innovate. I want US News and World Report number one ranking for best second year experience to go with our ranking for best first year experience. Well, since they don't have that ranking, I'll just settle for number one. Agnes Scott graduates individuals who will go on to become outstanding alumni. So it is fitting that I take a moment to congratulate our 2020 Outstanding Alumni Award winners. The following Scotties were selected for their accomplishments in the following areas. Outstanding service to the college. We recognize Adele Diekman McKee, class of 1948, noted for her service on the Alumni Association Board of Directors and her excellent stewardship of numerous funds for the college, ensuring that there is a human face and a warm and strong connection between our alumni donors and our students. For her distinguished career, we recognize Elizabeth Davis, 85, a noted legal authority on regulatory compliance with a 30-year career working both for government as part of the Environmental Protection Agency and as counsel for businesses and organizations. She also serves on the National LGBT Bar Foundation for which she currently serves as secretary and she speaks widely on diversity issues. For outstanding service to the wider community, we recognize Shula Berman Neskis, 98, a Woodrow Scholar, Shula's degree was part of a journey that began with her own children. Advocating for alternative treatments for children suffering from conditions ranging from ADHD to Tourette syndrome. And as this year's Outstanding Young Alumni Award winner, we recognize Kayla Singleton, who just received her doctorate in neuroscience at Georgetown University. While at Agnes Scott College, she earned a Neuroscience Research Fellowship for undergraduates from the National Institute of Health. At Georgetown, she's been awarded prestigious research fellowships, in addition to earning competitive NIH award for specialized postdoctoral research. With numerous articles and abstracts published or underway, Kayla also has presented over a dozen national conferences. Beyond her outstanding performance as a scientific researcher, Kayla has also been recognized for her excellence as a teacher and mentor and for her service in the field of neuroscience. Each of these alumni, in their own way, represents the absolute best of Agnes Scott College. This excellence has been our goal and aim for over 130 years and it will always be. In addition to your resilience, thank you to our reunion classes for your leadership and generosity. In the year ahead, we will continue to look to the future. With this in mind, we are launching a process to create a new strategic plan for the college. The world of higher education is changing. We need to not only change, but to continue to lead. We will be seeking input from all of our stakeholders and we plan to reach out to you. Yes, these are unprecedented and challenging times for everyone, but I know we are up to the challenge. Agnes Scott has a history of transforming students' lives. I know it has transformed many of yours. That work, our highest priority, will continue. Thank you for what you do for your dear alma mater, because together we are stronger. Thank you so much. You're broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round, and you can't find the bottom. But I see it in you, so we can walk it out.
Thank you, President Zach, for your strong and thoughtful leadership during these incredibly challenging times. You have led with care and compassion in support of our students, faculty, and staff in strong collaboration with your cabinet and the Board of Trustees. And thank you also to Carlissa and the other Luck Sunger alums for your inspiring music. Hello, my name is Pam Tipton, class of 1986, and it has been my privilege to serve this year as the immediate past president of the Alumni Board. This culminates eight years of service on the Alumni Board representing you. As part of my role this year, I served as chair of the nominating committee and as the national fund chair for the fund for Agnes Scott. One of the great advantages of serving on the alumni board is the opportunity to build deep relationships with alums across generations. For those of us rolling off the board, it's now our turn to find new ways to stay connected and give back to the college while welcoming a new group of alums to bring fresh perspective to the board. I feel such a sense of humility and honor serving the college on your behalf, and I am certain this is echoed by my fellow alumni board members whose term is ending like mine is. Thank you, thank you, thank you to my dear friends for the following outgoing alumni board members for their service. Linda Marks, class of 1967, also known as the queen of the hub scene, June Hall McCash, class of 1960, our famous author among us. Bernita Brown Lockhart, class of 1976, my true partner and my yin to my, the yin to my yang as we prepared for President Zach's inauguration. Diane Rickett Sandifer, class of 1984, a true community leader. She has also served as secretary to the board. Penny Powell, class of 1987, our cheerleader from the enthusiastic alumni chapter in Denver, Colorado. Jane Bigham, class of 2006, our CDC frontline servant, and Sabrina Citron Cassell, our enthusiastic idea generator from the great alumni chapter in Washington, DC. And now as chair of the nominating committee, I'm pleased to move that the Agnes Scott Alumni Association accept the following slate of nominees for board officers and directors. Whitney Miller Ott, class of 2003, for a two-year term as Alumni Association board president, and for a three-year term as members of the Alumni Association board of directors, Marilyn Little Tubb of Florida, class of 1965. Lenny Zell of Georgia, class of 1974. Laura McCurry Urban of New York, class of 1981. Jenny Spencer Parker of Georgia, class of 1980. And Tracy Oliver Gray of New Jersey, class of 1998. Giselle, I present this slate of nominees for a vote. Thank you, Pam. Using the chat feature, do I have a second to the motion to accept this slate of new leaders? Thanks to each of you for voting as you registered for today. I am pleased to announce that the ayes have it and to welcome these new leaders to the board of our association. I would like to say a special word of thanks to outgoing leader Pam Tipton. She has served with passion, with a deep commitment to the health of the college and the alumni community over her past eight years of service. Two of the many highlights of her service was acting alongside outgoing director, Bernita Lockhart as co-chair for President Zach's inauguration last year. She also led a much needed effort to update our alumni association constitution and bylaws in 2018. This brings the business meeting portion of this convocation to a close. It is now my pleasure to pass this gavel on to our new president, Whitney Miller Ott, class of 2003. Thank you, Giselle. I really, really appreciate it. And I just have to echo Giselle's thanks to Pam Tipton. Pam, what an incredible leader you have been, not only 
for the college, but for all of us as alumni. Thank you so much. And we are going to genuinely miss you at our um, upcoming alumni board meetings. And Giselle, I just have to say what an incredible honor and how excited I am to continue serving our dear Agnes alongside you and our fellow alumni board members. During your presidency, Giselle, you have modeled what unwavering commitment and selfless servant leadership look like. Um, so thank you so much for your example. You truly, no matter what, during your presidency, gave your all to all of us, and we are so much better off for it. From the bottom of my heart, both to you and to Pam, thank you for your example, for your guidance, and most importantly, for your friendship. Now, I have to say just a few words about this year's 50th reunion class, 50 years class of 1970. It's incredible. Congratulations on your milestone. You know, this class, when they came together and approached their 50th reunion year, um, they were a bunch of independent minded Scotties, no doubt, with a great diversity of experience. But they were very committed to working together and their reunion plans included collaborating to host a class auction and to develop some really incredible conversation starters to help classmates remain curious about one another, learn about one another as time has passed. And it's such a great example for what reunion should be all about. And frankly, a great example and model for all of us in the Alumni Association for how to remain curious about one another. So class of 1970, thanks for your example. And don't be surprised in this year ahead, we're gonna take a play from your playbook and ask ourselves on an ongoing basis as the alumni board, how can we remain curious about one another, um, about our decades spanning, and how can we continue to build camaraderie and friendships among classes? So again, congratulations, class of 1970, and thanks for your example. Now, President Zach mentioned that the college will be embarking on strategic planning. And alongside that effort, the Alumni Association, too, is going to develop a strategic plan of our own. And the real purpose there is so that we can prioritize our efforts on the alumni board to be inextricably linked with the strategic priorities of the college. In fact, that's one of our missions on the alumni board. And um, that's one of the part of our mission, I should say. And so when I think about our vision for the year ahead as alumni um, serving you all, we want to be laser focused on delivering on our mission of the alumni board. And I'm not sure that all of us as alumni are familiar with that mission. So I'd love to just take a minute to share what that is. There are three key pillars and we wanna measure progress against these. The first, as I've already mentioned, is to advance the mission and the strategic priorities of the college in partnership and in collaboration with staff, with faculty, with uh, the administration. And a great example of this is how we already partner with Don Killenberg in the Office of Internship and Career Development. Don is such a great partner and there are great ways for you all as alumni to get involved, so stay tuned for more there in the year to come. The second pillar of our mission on the alumni board is to represent your voices to the college. So to represent those voices appropriately and accurately, we've got to hear from you. So update ScottyNet if you haven't with your most um, recent contact information and participate in surveys and other um, modes of communication when we reach out. We have rolled out an alumni survey to certain classes and we'll continue to do that. We want to hear from you, we need to hear from you. And last but certainly not least, our third pillar of our mission on the alumni board is to cultivate engagement and connectivity among alumni of all generations. And this might be what I am most excited about when I think about the year ahead. Can you imagine through our communication and service to the college and stewardship, if we're able to move the needle just this much to hear from this many more of you, um, to get this many more of you involved as mentors or in recruiting and to get this many more of you giving back to the college that has served us all so well. It just makes me so excited to think about not only how much more we can enrich our own experiences as alumni, but also the incredible impact that we can have on our dear Agnes Scott. So thank you all so much. Um, I am honored and look forward to serving this body of alumni. And I'm gonna turn it back over now to Pam Tipton to talk about the fund for Agnes Scott and some reunion giving updates. I want to give a huge shout out to all of our fund chairs. It was so wonderful to see so many of you on our Zoom call a few weeks ago. 
Thank you to each and every fund chair, especially during these last few months for your generosity of service, treasure and commitment to the college. Please join me in giving a shout out, a Yahoo or a thumbs up to all of our fund chairs and for their continuing efforts in fundraising for the coveted Reunion Cups, we especially thank and want to recognize the Reunion Class Fund Chairs for their really hard work. Kama Clarkson Merritt, Class of 1950, Mary Ann McPherson of Shields, Class of 1955, Mary Jane Pickens Skinner, Class of 1960, Nancy Hammerstrom Bishop, Class of 1965, Bryn Cooey Daniel and Cheryl Grenade Sullivan, class of 1970. Virginia Parker Enos, class of 1975. Debbie Bolter Bonner, class of 1980. Ann Cooling, class of 1985. Teresa Ramirez Dory, class of 1990. Alexa Horn and Nicole Gosnell, class of 1995. Caroline Mitchell Hamilton and Andrea Harvey Enriquez, class of 2000. Natalie Regard, class of 2005, Esther Wallace, class of 2010, and Ty Brown, class of 2015. Obviously, we are living in really different times. So this year, we're not awarding the winners of the Reunion Cup trophies during the actual convocation because the opportunity to continue to give and compete for the coveted trophies has been extended through fiscal year end, which is June 30th, at an appointed time, which we all hope can be in person. We will announce the winners and award the trophies. But it's not too late to have your gifts counted towards your class totals. And it isn't just about how much you've given, but how your individual gifts combine to make a big impact. So far, 474 of the 1,696 reunion alumni this year have made a gift or pledge for the fiscal year. But guess what? That means that we still have 1,222 opportunities to get us across the goal line of $450,000 of reunion giving for the fund for Agnes Scott. So while we aren't giving away all the details just yet, are you ready for your amazing collective total so far? So far this fiscal year, the reunion classes of the zeros and fives have given or pledged to the Fund for Agnes Scott over $300,000 and made reunion gifts and pledges for all purposes to the college in the amount of $3.6 million. That is an incredible landmark to celebrate. And to keep the friendly competition going, I wanna share with you just a few hints of certain classes that are on their way to meeting their goals. A certain red class is burning the young alumni competition to a crisp for the Molly Merrick Trophy. Two classes are literally neck and neck for the highest percentage participation trophy. So will the peace of the 100 acre wood prevail? or will it be spoiled by a known neighborhood menace? You classes know exactly who I'm talking about and I can't wait to find out who wins. Now, we know that this is a very difficult and challenging time for so many. And we want you to know that you are in our thoughts and we are here to support you. If you can't make a gift right now, that's okay. Thank you so much for your continuing commitment to the college. The one thing we can do is stay connected and support each other as great Scotty sisters. So in the spirit of staying connected, we'd love to share with you some of the photos from the Stay Connected Scotty social media campaign. Enjoy the way Scotties are navigating our current situation. Thinking about tomorrow Clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow Till there's none When I'm stuck with a day that's gray and lonely I just stick up my chin and 
Wow, incredible. Thank you, Scotty Edlon, Jennifer Nettles, for recording that song during this time. We sure do need voices like Jennifer's and those gorgeous voices of our Luck Singer alums. What a treat. Our world needs talents like Kayla and Beth and Linda, and leaders like Brianna and Jody, and givers like Adele. Agnes Scott taught us to live honorably and to think deeply and to engage the challenges of our times. So we owe it to Agnes Scott to remain curious, to remain connected, and to remain hopeful in the year and the years ahead. Thank you everyone who helped bring us together today. It was so much fun. And before we go, I'm excited to announce that Alumni Weekend 2021 is going to be quite the party and you are all invited. Stay tuned for more details. There is so much more to come. And as we close, please join me in singing as our pianist Linda Marks, class of 67, plays our college hymn.
Thank you for joining us for the virtual alumni convocation at Agnes Scott College. This concludes the event.